Hey, welcome back to Engine Shop Joe. And if you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like the video you're going to see, please click thumbs up because that moves it up in rankings and it helps others to find it if they need it. And tonight, uh, I'm going to date myself and I'm going to steal a phrase from a television show that I used to watch. Uh, it was before, before I graduated, I think, a um, long time ago. Uh, the name of the show, I think, was called Kung Fu. But anyway, the, um, the, 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 the saying or, or line I'm going to steal out of it is, it's a good one. Ready? Always expect the unexpected. And um, briefly, what happened in the show was uh, these two, two uh, Shaolin Temple students were sent out to to take a document to another temple and they were bushwhacked in the woods by a guy who seemed to be a really nice guy and tried to help them and they got bushwhacked so when the then the two students had to go back and say hey you know we lost this important document and the uh the the old the old wise uh Sholin priest said to the one one student, well, what did you learn? And he said, never trust a stranger. And then he looked at the other guy and he said, well, what did you learn? And he said, always expect the unexpected. Well, that was the right answer. And he got to stay and finish his training and the other guy got the boot and had to go home. So always expect the unex unexpected. That takes us into our uh, fault snapshot tonight. And we just talked about an exhaust gas pressure sensor last week. We're going to talk about another one again. And this one's in an engine that has 215 brand new hours on it. So let's take a look and see if that sensor went bad or not. So the first thing we're going to notice here is if we look at first and last, first was two hours and 47 minutes and 31 seconds before the image was taken. And then the last occurrence, which had to be less than that, was actually, it says 74 hours. So I think that in this calibration, which is, if you look up at the top, it's HD 10461.07. That's an early calibration. You can see in the middle, this is an X15-2350. Um, there might be a little bug in the calibration. But anyway, the fault's not very old. It's a brand new unit, 215 total hours on it. And 2764, the exhaust gas pressure is valid, but above normal operating range, moderately severe. Valid means that the ECM has looked at all the other things going on and said, at the moment, um, I can accept that this is a valid reading and it is way higher than it should be. So we are now going to look at the fault snapshot for 2764 to see what was going on. So let's go halfway down the list and after treatment diesel particulate filter operating state, it is in a parked regen right now when this fault logged. And we know it's in a regen because the catalyst intake temperature is 685 degrees I'm looking in the first occurrence column and the diesel uh, particulate filter intake temperature is 200 degrees higher at 870. So we are in a we are in a regen and um, let's look at the next slide and see where uh, at some other values in this snapshot. So this is a new engine. I wanted to look at, at uh, the snapshot and make sure everything's where it belonged. If you look down, you'll see that barometric pressure, barometric air pressure is 29.6. That's fine for where we're at. The brake pedal's released, the clutch is released. They have to be, or we could not be in a stationary regeneration because it would get kicked out. Crankcase pressure is 3.1, 2.1, that's perfectly fine. Uh, EGR differential pressure is 0 0.0074. You're never going to see it at zero. What we don't want to see is like 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.
1.9.9. Even if we see 0.354, that's okay. Last at the bottom, we want to see the EGR valve command at zero. I've never not seen it at zero, commanded anyway, when we're in a stationary regen because that's one of the things that that engine operating state does is command the EGR valve to zero. So let's continue on. Who out there can tell me what kind of exhaust gas pressures we should have in a stationary regen or SCR performance test, which is the same really as a stationary regen in a sense that it does a regen, stationary regen during the SCR test, but it also tests the NOx system, okay? And you can see in the first column under engine operating state that we are in an SCR performance test, okay? And in that test, um, we should never, what, what should our exhaust gas pressure be? Don't all raise your hand at once. Okay, I heard somebody out there say, well, this is an, this is an ISX, and so it should be somewhere between 125 and very tops, 160. But most of the time will be in, in the 140s, between 140 and 150. And hey, you're right. Now, where it says engine operating state, look to the right column. That says automotive governor, right? What's the engine speed? 1,000 RPM. Well, we're not in the SCR performance test anymore. We have got kicked out and we're in the automotive governor. Why aren't we in the idle governor? Because of the RPM. The RPM is 1,000 RPM, 1,043, and that's too high, so it can't be at idle, so it's got to be on the automotive governor, okay? So why is this happening? We were in a regen. Well, let's look down a little farther. Look at the exhaust gas pressure. In the SCR performance test, where we should be reading about 140 to 145, we've got over 180. So let's look over at Automotive Governor, and what do we got there? 183 inches of mercury of exhaust gas pressure. That's way too high. So common sense would tell us that we need to replace the exhaust gas pressure sensor. It's failed, right? Well, let's continue to take a look. Rail pressure looks good. Commanded and measured is about right. Everything else is looking good. Uh, if you look up at engine hours towards the top, you'll see in the first column we only had two engine hours when this happened. And then we see 74 in the second when this happened. So um, we're, we could be thinking, well, the exhaust gas pressure sensor must be, it must be glitchy. That's what's coming and going, you know. So do we need to change that sensor? Well, let's look a little bit farther before we change that sensor. This is the last part of the fault snapshot that I wanted us to look at. And uh, normally... In the SCR system test, when the engine's going 1,000 RPM, our exhaust gas pressure is about 140 to 150, and the intake manifold pressure is somewhere between, say, 18 and 22. So what's the intake manifold pressure? About a third of the way down. First column, it's almost 50. Next column, it's 44. 49.7 is what you see pulling a hill when you were cranking on it, making some big horsepower. So how in the world could we have at 1,000 RPM, 49 inches of manif intake manifold pressure? Well, the only way for that to happen is if the turbo is closed to almost 100%. But let's look down at the turbocharger actuator commanded and measured. It says 75. Let's look over the next column at the turbocharger actuator commanded and measured. It says 77. And we've got 44 inches of boost. And the only reason we have boost is look at the speed of the turbo. 83,000 RPM. 
you usually never get over 45,000 in a stationary regen. And in the automotive governor, that ought to be down around 30, 35,000 tops. We've got 83,000. So that tells me that the VGT is mechanically close to 100%. But the VGT board is telling us that it's only 75 and then 77 respectively. So the board and the VGT on the new engine has failed and the VGT slap shut and the board's telling the ECM that it's in the right place and that it's doing what the ECM is commanding. We installed a new VGT motor on the turbo and everything came back into line and worked as it should. So much for quickly deciding to change the exhaust gas pressure sensor, which we never did change because there wasn't a thing wrong with it. Thank you for joining me on Engine Shop Joe. See you next time. Keep, on, keep your thinking caps on at all times.